they suddenly discovered that the British Union was always a hoax, that, that, that the treaty was always violated, uh, as all treaties between colonised peoples and the imperial power were always violated, whether it was native Aborigines or Indians or Scots, the treaties are always violated, or even Brexit recently, the treaty was violated almost immediately. Perfidious Albion cannot, can never really be, be trusted when it comes to its treaties. So we, we get to this reality, and once you discover the reality, you can't undiscover it. People have to understand their condition. And mm -hmm. in the colonial mm -hmm. environment, there is a condition. It is a colonial condition. They have to understand that first before they understand what independence is and why it's necessary. Mm -hmm. And independence is decolonization. And that is, gives you the remedy for colonialism, the only remedy, which is liberation. Now, Alf, in the book, civic nationalism, it's a very its a very altruistic way of thinking, but you see it as a detriment to Scottish independence, don't you? Yeah, well, the, 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 the oppressed native only becomes a nationalist to free himself from an oppressor. You know, we become Scottish nationalists not because we, we want to impose our culture or language uh, on another people, like our, our, our neighbour has done. <laughs> you know, they, 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 what we've been suffering from is cultural imperialism. Uh -huh. We've had a culture enforced on us, we've had a language enforced on us, and it's all about uh, exploiting us, our, our, our resources. Uh, and, and that's what we've had. We've had a form of British nationalism, and that ideology is a very aggressive one. That's been enforced on us. What Scottish nationalism is about, really, is, is, is about self-determination nation. That's about freeing ourselves from the oppression of imperial and ultra-nationalist British ideology, mm -hmm. uh, which is the Tory One Nation Britain. So we're about freeing ourselves from that oppression. So we're not about imposing our nationalism on us. The question of civic nationalism only raised itself in the last decade, say, if you like. Civic nationalism is really defined as people from other countries having a sense of belonging to the, to another country. That's all very well, but people who vote no, who come from other countries into Scotland, and a lot of them that came from, say, south of the border as well as other countries, voted against our self-determination. They voted against our liberation. So they don't have a sense of belonging to, necessarily, to Scotland. But over the generations, do, do, do people not then become um, part of that national character? You know, yes, of course, of course, after several generations, mm. hundreds of years maybe, they become part of that. But people coming in the last 10, 20 years, remember, culture is a very, very difficult thing to change. You've said mm -hmm. yourself that mm -hmm. our Scottish culture stays with us, even though we're not taught the language. We're beginning to get the last generations of that. Because of media and the media changes and everything and all the social media and, and societal changes, there's fewer and fewer Scots speakers. I mean, the last census in 2011 said 1.6 million people were Scots speakers. That's 30% that's of the population. That that's means that two-thirds of us are Anglophones. What liberation means in colonial societies is a self-recovery. Our language and our culture comes to our soul. And, and, and whereas what we have imposed on us is a, an illusion, as Dick Goffin said. <laughs>